Welcome to the August meeting of Soquel Creek Water District. Um, roll call will show Director Christensen not here, but the other directors present. Um, no public hearing tonight. So the first item then would be the consent agenda. Is there anyone that wishes to pull anything off? 3.8 puts on tap. Yeah, me too. Just minor stuff. No? Okay. Anyone in the public? Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner. I have some questions about um, issues on 3.3, .3, the warrants, and also item 3.9 the triennial report on public health goals. I'd okay. like to discuss those. Thank you. Okay. We'll pull those. Thank you. Okay. Any mo motions for? I move all the rest. Okay. I'll second. <coughs> Moved, seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> I had okay. a frog in my throat, um, I swear. So there was a question <coughs> from the public on um, July oh, warrants, item 3.3. .3. Ms. Steinberg? Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner of Aptos. I actually, uh, I, I, I like to look over these and see where money goes. And so I want to ask um, on uh, the $32,489 to Best Best and Krieger. I, that's a lot of money and I know what it's about, but um, I would appreciate uh, perhaps your counsel, Mr. Basso, explaining why Best Best and Krieger always flies up instead of using court call. That could really reduce the expenses of this action. I also have questions on uh, page 18 about uh, the encroachment permit for the Granite Way well, because there's no place where uh, I see that there would be uh, adjoining streets or anything going on to any of the county maintained streets. Page 20, um, um, I wonder why Ecology Action staff is being paid over $2,500. Page 23, um, $36,000 to Hanson and Bridget, another legal firm that you've brought on board to uh, do work with the Lamb Estate and that property for the proposed uh, Chanticleer Avenue site. Page 25, I'm questioning if, uh, why, what was the purpose of Leslie Strom's trip to Washington, D.C.? And um, page 32, um, I'm questioning what kind of maintenance is done at the Glenwood property for $500 and um, th why you don't just sell this property as uh, excess property. Page 33. Um, and 800, I uh, just want to bring up that you're once again paying a monthly $800 lease for um, the Twin Lakes Church site and wonder again why this work was begun before the project was approved and why the district did not do this kind of work at properties that you own already and are appropriating for injection well sites. Page 37. Um, is a question $8,800 for billing services and uh, there have been questions from the public about this that you outsource your billing services when you have people in house that could be doing it and wouldn't that save a lot of money. I uh, suggest you take a, a page from Central Water District's queue and use um, local sources, especially disadvantaged people. Page 39, I'm questioning the refunds to of uh, nearly $2,500 to Mr. Jeff Ursino and 500 okay. I'm gonna for ask Susan that, Moulton. Um, possibly staff can answer her questions at another time rather than take the, the meeting for this time. Is there anyone else on that item? Yes. No. Oh, on, no. It's not general public comment yet. It's just on that one item. Consent agenda. I, I agree entirely. Okay, Dr. that's. Worth your time with Ms. Steinbrenner's conclusions. Um, so the next item would be item 3.8 then. Um, what's on tap? Good evening. Bruce, you had, oh yeah, yeah. go ahead. 
Did you want to present something? or? Well, uh, okay. Becca's here tonight because uh, Melanie's out uh, giving a presentation, so he, she'll be glad to answer. She puts together the what's on tap. Right. Yep. So I can answer any questions or take any comments or corrections. There was just a minor. I have a couple too. Just uh, extraordinary was okay. misspelled. That's at the top of the first page on the right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You're not showing for some reason. Oh. That was yeah, it. That okay. was it. I'm sure you have yeah, more. I liked your descriptions of the stormwater, you know, the summaries and the update on stormwater and the G cell. Oh. Succinct. Thank you. Okay. Can I add a few suggestions? Hope sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so on the front page, which is the upper right on this one, um, it, when, when you start talking about the solution, um, you know, they're just you go into them in detail on the next page. So that took care of most of my questions. But I just wondered if under groundwater management, it says we adaptively manage. I'm not sure if everybody knows that that means we're monitoring closely. So maybe just add the word monitoring in there, um, and then. On the one where it says the solution, there's three bullet points on the left-hand column of that. Where the last one says year-round reliability. Mm -hmm. I I'm, I think the reliability was not just year-round; it was just like long-term okay. reliability. Um, to me, that's the the one that m most people were interested in. Um, under water conservation, I just thought the last line might want to go at the beginning. <laughs> Thank you for amazing conservation efforts that our customers have done. It was just an idea. Um, on the next little, which would be the third page, right, let's see if I can read this, it's pretty small. Um, under Pure Water SoCal, it said, we have received over $2 million in grant funding and are actively seeking additional grants and low interest loans from the state and federal resources somewhere in there explain that that's to decrease the overall cost to our customers I think because that's the whole goal of getting the grants um, and then even though it's a bullet point at the bottom of that page that says reduce, reduces ocean discharge by 25% I thought maybe that should be mentioned up in the text about why purified water or somewhere in there with the Orange County one because I think that's a, an important point that's all I have. Anyone else? No? Well, Any members of the public? Okay, so that's not an item we need to vote on, just giving feedback. Thank you. Thank you, it, was, it really looks good. So sorry, I mean, I, mean I'm, I have little picky points, but it, it looks great. I know you put a lot of work into it, so thank you. Um, all right, so there was a um, public comment on item 3.9. Thank you, Becky Steinbrun, a resident of Aptos. I have a question. This is a very um, key item that I think will have great interest by your ratepayers. How are you planning to notice the public hearing that will be held on September 17th? Um, and how are you going to let people know in advance that six constituents were detected at or above the applicable a DLR at entry points to or within the distribution system at levels above the public health goal. Um, is that going to be in the what's on tap? Will this, I, I didn't really look at that issue on there, but it should, it would be good to have this public hearing in the what's on tap. And um, I also think it's interesting that um, it says that the health goals are not enforceable. And so looking to the future, if the Pure Water SoCal project does go through, how would you uh, notice any contaminants in your system as a result of that project? Thank you. Okay. Um, I think the um, I'll just mention the public health goals are um, specifically that. They're not anything to do with a you know, maximum contaminant level. Sometimes they're logarithmically lower than that. So um, until there's an MCL, then I think 
you know, we do, we're, we're okay. Another point about the public health goals is sometimes they're set so low, logarithmically, that you can't even measure down that low. So you can't even tell whether you're meeting the public health goal or not because technology has not gotten to the point where you can tell the difference. Okay, so um, that is, see, that does require a motion, I think. I'll make that motion to accept the triennial report. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. Your Honor, I mean, <laughs> I gotta remember wow. where I am right now. <laughs> Wear your robes tonight. You should have worn your robe. Uh, Emma pointed out we didn't. You didn't have a motion on the warrants, which were separated out. Oh, good point. Emma spotted that. Okay, so um, I make a motion for the warrants too. I'll second. Moved and second for the warrants. Thank you very much, Emma. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, now the next item is oral and written communications on, these are on items that are not on tonight's agenda. Um, so anyone with wishes to address the board on any matters not on the agenda, now would be the time. Mr. Basso, are you the transcriber or is it over here? Who's keeping the record? Who's receiving exhibits? She is. Emma is. There's those. Identical. And let me give one of the credit. Generate a copy to each board member. Very convenient for you. I'm Colonel Terry Maxwell, and I'm a customer and an observer of this water board. And I'm concerned about the financial impact of Pure Water SoCal and everything else you do on your ratepayers and customers, including myself. Pure Water SoCal project is yet another one of the inept, elaborate, wasteful frauds inflicted upon the SoCal Creek Water District customers. It's consistent with a pattern that has gone on for 40 years. It's as well documented, 45 years in fact. Your most senior staff and your consultants and your legal counsel are culpable in unethically and dishonestly failing to comply with the California Environmental Quality Act and related regulations and statutes in the California Environmental Impact Review process. Ms. Steinbrunner, properly brought a lawsuit for a temporary restraining order. That thing's moving pretty fast. That's faster than three minutes. I didn't use up a minute and 26 seconds, or That's a minute great. and a half. You've had that time. No, I didn't. Well, don't waste it now. Sadly, all right, <laughs> okay. The bottom line is, uh, it's another example of profligate negligence. In addition, Mr. Basso defended Judge Gallagher's incredibly wrong decision denying Ms. Steinbrenner's initial TRO and its reconsideration. And in fact, Judge Gallagher ignored the facts and the evidence that were clear. He ignored the California law. He ignored it all. Judge Gallagher has a reputation for doing this. And in fact, embarrassingly, two recent uh, appellate decisions overruled him for the same pattern of conduct, ignoring the facts and evidence, ignoring the applicable California law, and failing to be attentive to it. Uh, it's tragic, but it's also true. And Mr. Basso, as I point out in what I've filed, he's responsible for Judge Gallagher being on the court. He's responsible for other judges who've been criticized on the court for terrible improper conduct and injudicious behavior. Uh, Judge Gallagher should have recused himself. He was worked for you guys for nine years. You paid him highly. His law partner was still representing you as he'd done for decades. Clearly, he should have properly recused himself. Mr. Basso should have moved for that. You all should have moved for it. The failure of this board to behave ethically is again demonstrated, and your disregard for your ratepayers and the pure water SoCal alternatives are clearly available at much less cost. Is there anyone else that wishes to address the board? Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner, resident of Aptos. 
Um, I just want to point out that the Mid-County Groundwater Sustainability Plan is now open for public review and that on August 28th there will be a public question and answer uh, opportunity for people to talk with staff and really get some answers. That will be 7 o'clock at Simkin Center. I really encourage people to read through that document and I'm grateful that the uh, Mid-County Groundwater Agency elected to put it in hard copy in local libraries because it's a massive document and for people like me with very limited computer <laughs> systems um, it really helps a lot so I urge people to really read that very critical document that will be coming before the um, Mid-County Groundwater Agency Board on September 18th I think 19th. 19th thank you and I want to um, I did submit a uh, written communication to you yesterday but I know that it's late so it's not on the back table in late communication but I have a lot of concerns about the board's new policy regarding public communication um, it is no longer course written correspondence is no longer included with your agenda packets and um, I was talking with Ms. Olin, and, and again, Ms. Olin, I really want to thank you for making available to me a hard copy of the board agenda because it helps me a lot. And again, I have limited computer things, so. But, but I noticed there was no written correspondence, and I was looking because I submitted uh, a number of things. And um, I was told that the communication would not be included with the minutes, even in an item. If I were to submit something now to you regarding, say, the triennial report on health goals, it would not get included with that item on the minutes of the, the board meeting. It would be kept separate in communication. Now, what that does is it isolates public comment on issues on the agenda. And it also makes it expensive for anyone who wants to uh, perhaps create a record of proceedings to collect the, the public comments that were submitted. So let me use an example here, and I put this in my message. On December 18th of 2018, when you approved the Pure Water SoCal project, there were over 65 emails that came in to you but did not meet the uh, deadline to get it into the packet. They were included in the minutes, but under your new policy, they would not be. So if I wanted to include something like that in an administrative record, I would have to file a Public Records Act request as what Ms. Olin told me may be the case now even for me to get it in the future, the public comment. And so that costs people at least $110 for everything. And Thank that's you. not fair, it's not transparent. Thank so I urge you to reconsider this policy. Thank you. I do have a question about that, Emma. Um, is there a way to at least have a link, like if there's written communications on the agenda somewhere so that it's not like they don't have to go to a separate spot? Uh, <coughs> let me take that and address it, <coughs> and then you can chime in if that's okay. Um, as reported in the board minutes, this item was addressed a, a while back, and what we did is we went out and looked, we wanted to define what the best practices were for written correspondence. I think we found out about half of the uh, agencies don't include it as, as at all uh, as part of the board packet because that's board business. Uh, what some of them did uh, that we thought was uh, brilliant, um, and let me back up, the ones who do include it sometimes like we used to, uh, the if it was submitted late, it was part of the minutes. If it was submitted early, it was part of that board packet. But in that mode, customers, if they were looking to see, looking through the minutes, they may not see the response that uh, was included because it was submitted, you know, kind of late. Uh, there was separation of response to the, to the letters. So what we found that some agencies uh, do that we thought was kind of a best practice is, is shown up here on the screen as written here. Uh, or under oral communications, if you go back up to the top, this is in every board packet, and it has a link on the website. I think this is where you were getting to, so would you please mm -hmm. click on that? And as you can see, you come down to the board packet and a little bit further down, a little bit further down, right there, and the correspondence, you can go ahead and okay. click on that. Mm -hmm. And you can come up and it, now it sh it'll show what's in this 
meeting and, and uh, that apply to that. Okay. Emma, would you like to add to that? I think that covers it. No, that's okay. great. I'm, I didn't, hadn't checked. Yeah, we think it, it best associated with the, the public agenda. and the customers. And there we go. This is a, a letter submitted for in time for this board uh, meeting with the our response coupled with the letter from or email in this case from the customer okay so it was include the response what's that yeah. and we conclude the response there nice. too Great. in one place yes nice. good thank you but it it is a it is a big change it is a big change we and think it's it, for the better i think that we should discuss it okay at the at you know at a meeting okay so and like we did previously a, but we i can know bring but it, it okay it, i was absolutely i'll write it down thank you all right, so we'll move on to um, management update. I'll kick that off first for conservation and customer service field. Um, I wanted to add something to clarify from the last meeting when Director Daniels had asked regarding the AMI installation. If we would be reading the meters that we had uh, converted to AMI system, if we would also be reading them in drive-by mode, and I thought that we would, but what we found out through the operation is that we can't read in both modes. It's one or the other, mm. um, but we have done some manual checks of reads going to the base station. We also have built into our Tyler billing system um, parameters that flag reads that are out of range from normal use um, based on monthly usage for the prior year and then um, kind of seasonal usage. So we feel like, you know, there's some good QA, QC going on because I think that was kind of the, the intent of your question is how are we making sure that the reads yeah. are good. We also did read um, all of the meters in drive-by mode first before we swapped them over to AMI mode, and then we can compare those two reads and kind of make sure they're similar, so. Okay. Yeah, and then if you had any other questions on the the other items I reported in the management update, sure. I, I had a question about okay. the AMI. Uh-huh. Do you know if they're in my neighborhood? Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, my next door neighbor had some weird thing that he was telling me about, and. I was wondering if it was the AMI meter. So. The, well, they may have replaced the registers. It, it depends. Um, I would have to like look at the address. We've, d we've put in about 2,500 of the AMI registers. Mm -hmm. Not all of those are reading in the AMI mode yet. The majority are still reading in the drive-by mode. Uh, we want to kind of keep it small until we can make sure that things are working well before we start uh, converting a lot of routes over. So. Um, if you want to, if I can check on that yeah, and get back to you. I can give mm -hmm. you the address. But it, it was just, a, I'll talk to you offline. Okay. Okay. And then Bruce, you have Well, did you want to say something first? Yeah. yeah. Um, you're, Probably you're, the same thing. <laughs> perhaps. Uh, you're talking here about, you know, that initially it, it was not working very well. In fact, very few of them were actually being read. And then further down, you say, the new base station computer is now operational and reception levels have been holding at 91%. Yeah. Does that mean only 91% of them are reading and 9% and are not reading? 91% of the AMI, serv the services that have been upgraded with the AMI registers and have been reprogrammed to read to the base station are being picked up. So 9% we're having some reception issues with and we think that'll be improved when we fill in the rest of the fixed network. It'll be picked up by another repeater or carried to another base station possibly. Um, we do have some very mountainous areas um, where we may have to do some small numbers of pickups in drive-by mode and they might not be, it might not be possible to have still AMI, a, yeah, but it'll be, progress, it's still a work in progress. Um, the base station, the initial base station was working well, and then all of a sudden, for some reason, the reception started declining. We thought it was the modem antenna not getting good reception, and so they tried some different configurations of that. Then they tried a different antenna, and that helped, but it was still not where it needed to be, so Master Meter came out 
immediately and replace the whole base station electronics and now we're back up to where we would expect things to be and things are holding for the last probably about a week and a half so yeah thank you and that was what i was asking <laughs> <laughs> okay. so the nine percent since it's not being transmitted it's being recorded somewhere oh yeah yeah it's being recorded and those are um still being read in the drive-by mode so we just drive by and pick those up once a month okay yeah and then it's good to see that that you're working on uh, the software for people to detect leaks themselves etc yeah and we're trying to think about the best way to roll that out to a small group and test it out and then uh as you know we get more installations in and more of the base stations and repeaters in, kind of expanding it out to throughout the service area so where are the those cold spots the nine percent um the cold spots like cathedral drive uh is kind of a tricky area loma prieta some of them may be on the fringes too of the zone of reception for the first base station and repeater so that you know those are ones that could be picked up with the addition of another base station and repeater in that area so um, oh, go ahead oh i just want to move on from that if oh i just had a question just about um master meter Mm -hmm. So they replaced the base station. How long is their guarantee on this stuff? The, there's a warrant, one year warranty, and then after that, we buy an annual maintenance agreement, okay. and then that covers us for any sort of problems that okay. would occur. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so you had another question on for conservation? Yeah, uh, I was wanted to move on to the offset <laughs> program again. And so I was wondering, would you just take me through uh, update I because I can't remember exactly precisely uh, how update uh, how offsets would work for a larger project like an apartment complex or a hotel or sure so um, you know we we have a credit bank of, mm -hmm. of offsets available now for purchase yeah, by applicants yeah, there is a maximum purchase of 10 acre feet per project mm -hmm. so if a project required yeah. more than 10 acre feet they would have to propose a project to the board that would save that equivalent amount of water within our service area and we have those guidelines that we developed about what sort of projects you want to see happen um, you know to, to meet that additional offset uh, the way the process works is people apply um, for new water service and they pay an application fee and they put down 10 percent of their projects offset requirement up front and then we come to you for a conditional will serve and that would allow them once that's granted to start their their building permit planning processes and then they would come back once they secured either a development permit for a bigger project or a building permit for a small project and purchase the remaining 90% of their offsets. And so we don't <coughs> combine offsets from previous projects or anything like that anymore? I, I'm sorry, I didn't. We don't combine um, offsets from other projects or previous? Um, right now, we're we're selling the offset credits from the water savings from the AMI project mm -hmm. and That's it. yeah we're done with the toilet uh, rebate that was the enhanced toilet rebate that was funding the offset project for the last couple of years mm -hmm. that that ended um, at the end of the fiscal year and so now we're back to just a regular hundred dollar rebate that's being funded through our conservation budget yeah, I just wanted to clear that up, especially for anybody who's watching TV. <laughs> yeah, there are some big projects that are being talked about, and yeah. we've been approached by some of those people, but they haven't formally applied for service yet. Good. All right, moving on. Thank you, Shelley. Uh -huh. um, engineering? I just want to mention the contractor at the Granite Way well site has uh, begun earthwork and so that site those site improvements are going to be underway for the next couple months um, we anticipate um, the pump being installed in October near the end and then shortly thereafter we'd be bringing it online so we'll keep you posted how that construction goes on okay. any questions about my bullets 
Good bullets. Look. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you've been busy. Thank you. Thanks, Taj. Um, Christine. Um, I wanted to mention that I think you are all aware that uh, we had a main break last Wednesday in Capitola Village. Um, a contractor working for the county sanitation district broke our water main. Um, we had to actually shut down the water because if we left the, uh, uh, if we just throttled down and left positive pressure in the main, it was threatening a nearby gas main. So we had to just shut it completely off, which put um, Capitola Wharf, there's a restaurant out there and two small hotels and about 25 residential or vacation units out of water from like about noon until mm, seven or eight o'clock at night. Um, and because there was the sewer main in the same excavation that was also, um, that the contractor was removing, um, the division of drinking water uh, and, and the district decided that we needed to issue a boil water notice. So we did that on um, Wednesday evening, notified everybody and uh, took samples on Wednesday night and again on Thursday and then we got the results back on Friday and we were, be able, we were able to cancel that well water notice. So everyone was Thank you um, to your very staff for your cooperative. Yeah, yeah, the word of the street was it was very professionally handled. Oh, that's good to hear. Oh, that's good. And how many people roughly were affected? Well, the like 25 residential vacation units, two okay. hotels, and then the uh, restaurant on the wharf. Okay. Not a large number. Yeah. Right. And the same customers are going to be, we're going to have a planned shutdown next Tuesday um, to install a, a valve in that water main so that the, the county can proceed with their, um, their sewer replacement. But, and so they've all been notified of that as well. Okay. Okay. Anything else for Christine? No? Okay, special projects. Melanie's out, um, like I said, giving a presentation, but I'll just report for her that she applied, that there's a design um, build uh, conference coming up and she uh, applied for a scholarship to attend or cover the hotel, uh, maybe the tuition too. Anyway, was awarded that. It's a small amount, but every, Penny helps yeah. our customers and that sort of thing. So that was noticed today. So good for her. Okay, and finance. Oh, I've got a new finance director. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie's Leslie's shaking her head. She doesn't have anything else to add. <laughs> um, can I just? Um, I still, like, you know, on our little website. I don't. You know, when you go to most websites to pay your bill, there's a big button that says "Pay your bill here," and I think it's hard to find on our website so just there's a few little glitches that just you know certain websites are easy some are and I still are still need some a little bit some ways to make it easier okay now human resources uh, I just want to uh, it uh, remind the board um, about our uh, celebration uh, event that we're having this Thursday and we hope you can all make it we've got some big milestones that we'll be celebrating this week, um, and so we hope to see you there on Thursday afternoon at the um, Aptos Community Foundation building. Thanks. Okay, thank you. What time is that? It's at 2.45. Begins at 2.45 to 5 p.m. It's so a tough time for me. Yeah, right so if you can come in any time, that would be great. Just in the middle of my surgery day. Okay. <laughs> so, the west side, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so let's see, general manager. I don't have anything to report out this time. Thank you. Okay. So are there any public comments on the management report? All right, update. Thank you. Yes, Becky Steinbrenner. Um, I'm a little perplexed why the finance had no report <laughs> when you've got communication in your packet uh, from a number of people saying it's not going well. And I think that your ratepayers who maybe are watching this would appreciate knowing what you are doing to try to improve things. Um, I'm not one of your ratepayers, but every time I go to your office, there are at least one or two people there expressing frustration with this whole changeover. So um, something to give your customers confidence that it's in being improved would be great. I. Um, 
wondered about the water demand offset, and I think um, Director Christensen was sort of um, edging around the big elephant in the room, and that's the big hotel proposed for Capitola Village by Barry Swenson Builder. Um, that's, I went to the Planning Commission meeting, and that was a huge question that a lot of people had about that. And um, the City Council will be hearing the presentation for that hotel project, I believe, this Thursday evening. So um, I would encourage your board to attend. Um, I had questions about the AMI and um, the repeaters being, the hard structure of the repeaters being installed. Um, where will those repeater towers go? I'm an amateur radio operator, and I'm always um, a little concerned about interference, as are many operators. So I would like to know kind of where those are planned to go, especially since the Cathedral Drive area is a problem area, and that's my neighborhood. I also, um, uh, regarding the operations of the engineering report, I'm, I'm a little surprised that the Granite Way well is moving so slowly. It was uh, drilled, constructed, almost two years ago, and it's just sat there. And I drive by it every day, so I know what's going on, and I was interested to see it finally being grubbed and getting ready to go. But the, that it will not come online until October is a very long time, and I think that's a little curious, and wondering if it's at all tied to the phase two final map of the Aptos Village project. I, uh, in terms of uh, water quality, um, I noted that there were some wells that, uh, two wells that are being treated for arsenic, but they're not named in the report on page 68. And that uh, the Ledyard well has high readings of uh, radi radioactive um, things. I think that's also of concern. And there are, in uh, page 74, the Roback wells, uh, show a lot of high levels of brominated things. So I'm wondering if uh, perhaps operations could get up and explain that a bit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. No one else? We'll move on to MGA and GSB Advisory Committee meeting report. Just putting that uh, 5.2 up there in case any of the board members um, that it are on the MGA or the GSB want to report out. We're kind of in a holding mode or, you know, we until we get comments on the uh, groundwater sustainability plan, and as it was announced, the, it's out on the street for everybody to uh, to provide comment on. And then we'll be back uh, at an MGA meeting in September for the board to, to see those comments and uh, uh, and come back at a later date for adoption. But we're proceeding along the schedule that we originally envisioned I think over two years ago for the plan to be adopted and on track as the uh, partner agencies and the private well owners work together so I think it's uh, good news just to report out from there and the GSP advisory committee is, is uh, was formed I don't know maybe a year and a half ago that's been dissolved because their their charter was to uh, guide uh, the development of the groundwater sustainability plan, which they did, and especially the uh, indicators that are the heart of the plan. Okay. Um, I, on, on that week of September 19th and the board meeting on 17th, I'm going I'm to be out of the state. So okay, I'll make we'll note. We need to make sure we have an alternate there. And okay. Then, um, Thank you. I think Cynthia Matthews is vice chair. She is. Yeah. So maybe we could just give her a heads up that she'd be running the meeting. I'll take give care of Cynthia that. heads up. Okay. Who's the alternate? Cynthia Matthews. No, no, no she's the vice. But chair. you're not going to be at the meeting, so we right. need our alternate. Our, too, so. our alternate. Um, is that you? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, um, district council. Two items. Um, the one there was an article in the CSDA newsletter today that that I went in and read <clears throat> and apparently the California Housing Authority has uh, authorized a study of impact fees and what their effect is on housing costs etc and it just come out and indicates that it definitely is an impact on housing costs but also that it's a source of revenue that public agencies need um, given the restrictions on taxing 
um, and but they tied it into the potential of at least there's another initiative out there for a split tax roll under Prop 13 where commercial would be uh, exempt from Prop 13 and residential would continue under it. So the governor has indicated some desire to see that kind of thing happen, so we'll see where that goes. And the other si second item is that a, a couple of m weeks ago or maybe a month ago, I reported on a, a lawsuit that had been filed by Santa Cruz Underground Paving against the district uh, rising out of the paving work they had done for Swenson Company. That has now been picked up by JPIA and they're defending it under the insurance policy. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. Any that questions? completes my report. Council. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Um, so next, um, we we don't have any will serve, so we have a happy and sad thing. I mean, we have a wonderful person who worked for many years here, and because you've worked so closely with him, I wanted Christine to be able to read the. Um, yeah, Evolution. Casey Cole, he's uh, our field supervisor of our water distribution crew. Um, he's worked here his entire adult life and even before that. Um, he is going to be, right? excuse me? High school, right? Yeah. An intern. Um, <laughs> we're going to miss him very much. I'm going to really miss him. I, I, um, one thing that didn't make it into the resolution was that he's got this amazing memory and he he remembers where every pipe is from every tank site from every well site from he knows where all the pump to weights are the overflows and i mean we're going to be just losing a, a wealth of knowledge <coughs> when he leaves so i mean just can't the other find day. something can we call him <laughs> <laughs> um so uh we have a resolution here um in appreciation um, the Board of Directors of the Soquel Creek Water District at its August 20th, 2019 meeting made the following findings. Whereas Casey was permanently hired by the district in April 1984 after participating as a student worker in the Monday School program in high school and working a few stints of temporary employment, Casey has dedicated his entire district career to the construction and maintenance water distribution unit, rising through the ranks to become the water distribution field supervisor in 2007, and whereas Casey is leaving the district with more than 35 years of system knowledge, contributing countless hours working in the field on our critical infrastructure, and whereas Casey is a beacon of loyalty, dependability, and reliability, ready to tackle problems and always on hand to ensure water is flowing through our pipes to our customers, and whereas Casey was a key member of the construction and maintenance crew instrumental in keeping the water flowing after the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. On an October 24, 1989 memo to the board stated, district workers and construction contractors worked continuously for the first 30 hours following the earthquake. Workers accomplished an almost impossible task by providing uninterrupted service to more than 95% of our connections through the earthquake. All major functions of district staff worked exceedingly long hours under difficult conditions to produce water with limited resources. And whereas Casey has been a trusted mentor throughout the years, imparting his vast knowledge and infinite wisdom to staff in the field, and where Casey has upgraded and maintained his state certification and licensing requirements for 35 years, Casey holds a Class A commercials driver's license with a tank endorsement and grade four distribution and grade two treatment operator certifications. And whereas Casey truly cares about providing a reliable and sustainable water supply, quickly responding to emergencies 24 hours a day, ensuring crews under his watch work safely, swiftly, and with great care and quality to restore service. A September 23, 2008 memo to the board regarding two simultaneous large diameter main breaks stated, Field crew supervisor Casey Cole deserves special recognition for his fine work during the emergency. I directly observed him being surrounded by five people talking in his ear at the same time while his cell phone was ringing and the radio traffic was going hot and heavy. You could visibly see the stress on his face, but he continued to do an excellent job from morning to night and was at work the first thing the next morning. And whereas Casey's warm heart and cool head 
come through in all the work he does. Casey endears himself to staff and shows compassion for district cu customers by maintaining good relationships with neighbors affected by construction and maintenance projects. His calm confidence, especially during emergency situations, isn't just something he's developed in his many years here. It's a genuine part of his core and truly who he is. And whereas Casey has absolute respect for our customers as demonstrated by his resolute approach to water theft, if Casey catches wind of a potential water theft, he is often observed dropping everything, running to his truck and making a beeline out of the gate to be the district's water cop. And whereas Casey has been a stalwart leader in district safety by instilling his knowledge and providing critical oversight of district-wide safety programs and work practices. He keeps the safety of others at the top of his priority list and exercises leadership in addressing safety trading needs and promoting resources and equipment to keep the work of staff healthy and safe. And whereas Casey is respected by his peers and other agencies and district construction partners successfully collaborating and working towards common solutions during emergencies and long-term projects, and whereas Casey is a creature of habit and routine, his crew is convinced even in retirement he'll be eating carrots every weekday morning at 9.30 a.m. And whereas Casey fosters an atmosphere of teamwork and trust, is a respective supervisor, and his calm spirit and kind heart touch all departments of the district. And whereas the, it, the district honors Casey's dedication by retiring the radio call sign 220 to forever remember his commitment and expertise he shared with his coworkers, and now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Soquel Creek Water District that Casey Cole is hereby recognized for his remarkable 35-year dedicated career and to his innumerable contributions to and the legacy he will be leaving with the district, and be it further resolved that we all join in extending our sincere appreciation for his loyalty professionalism and years of service and wish him a very long rewarding and well-deserved retirement all right thank you for reading that yeah <laughs> i move we adopt the resolution yeah. uh, sorry casey's not here but i hope yeah he couldn't hope make it we know and i'll second the motion to adopt the resolution and um roll call please director leather yes vice president daniels yes director <clears throat> jaffe yes Director Christensen. The pleasure, yes. Mm -hmm. And President LeHue. Uh, yes. All right. Well, thank you. And um, we have a lot of good people in this organization. And he's just one of one of the examples. All right. Uh, next is the emergency service agreement for Trout Gulch. Um, yeah. So this um, uh, agreement for uh, an intertie with Trout Gulch Mutual Water Company. Um, it was a five-year agreement, and it expired on August 12th. Um, so we're bringing to the board a renewal of this agreement. The last agreement had a, a contingency for a midterm report on their metering progress. And um, in 2014, we were able to report that they are 100% metered now, or they were 99% metered, and now they are 100% metered. Mm -hmm. um, so we've included uh, a proposed contract and uh, they also have a, a report here that identifies all the improvements that they've made to their system um, and their uh, water restriction measures that go into effect whenever they are uh, exporting water from us or importing water from us. Um, Robert Schultz and uh, Patricia Newby are here if you guys have any questions of them. And um, questions? that's it. I mean, they've been an example of doing a really good job over the years. Uh, getting it, when we first worked with them, I think you know they they weren't close to this, but they've done a great job. So thank mm -hmm. you, Bruce. Yeah. Well, I'd like to second that. That you know, it's it's tough running any kind of water district, finding money to do improvements and all that, and and they've done amazing jobs of making their system more reliable and more certain and mm -hmm. and more efficient. And I just want to congratulate them on that that great accomplishment. Yeah. No other questions, and uh, I'll move approval of the renewal agreement. I'll second. I just oh. wanted to second something. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Second. I'll second it. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, now the PG&E. Yes. So as staff um, 
thought it was important that can, um, customers make the connection to these public safety power shutoffs or PSPSs um, that will mean they will have mandatory water rationing. So the county had been blanketing about, you know, your power could be shut off, but what does that mean for your water service? Um, and I don't think people were making the connection. So that's why we came up with the website page and um, this whole action plan for when we get notice from PG&E that they might actually do one of these for us. Are they going to do a test, uh, a test of the system? No, I they don't. don't they so. don't, don't know where to test. I mean, they have called a couple in Northern California already, so they've been practicing with those. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but have we been have we been practicing with ours, our SOPs? Uh, yeah, we do. We we prepared a new wildfire safety power shutoff um, internal operational SOP um, and um, more generators. Yes, you guys approved mm -hmm. uh, another generator, another Sandboy generator, and then our. Right, our fuel trailer that we got last year, so we're able to um, deliver a fuel, more higher quantities of fuel, and then also be able to go outside of our district and purchase fuel if we need to, if if we're not able to be supplied by our contractors. Mm -hmm. Okay. All good. Any questions? Okay, we're awesome. good. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Well, oh, do you have an input? Oh, there what? are people here. Yeah, sorry. Um, any? I just wanted to ask for public comment. Uh, Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner of Aptos. I attended, um, I think it was yesterday morning, an, a, a tri-county PG&E public safety power shutoff policy and procedure workshop in Watsonville. And um, that issue of uh, <coughs> notification was a big topic. <laughs> and what um, law enforcement asked of PG&E representatives there was that if it looks like it could be a possibility that um, utilities, water utilities be given uh, advance notice at 12 hours at least if possible. So I would urge you and maybe you already are working with Rosemary um, Anderson at the county EOC. The upshot of this workshop was to urge government and uh, quasi-government agencies to really work together now to put in place policies. And, and I see that you're doing a good job, but um, I do think that maybe notification needs to go beyond website. Um, you may need to consider um, reverse 9-11 uh, notification if that's appropriate. And also to consider uh, the, the, the big question that came up regarding water utilities was how would um, agencies like you maintain high uh, fire flows if there were a need for fire protection. So um, I'm sure you're working with Rosemary Anderson and, and I really applaud you for thinking ahead and doing the fuel tank and things like that. Uh, outages could be up to uh, 72 hours, but they explained that they would try to prioritize reestablishing the um, restoration of power for key things like water utilities, but it will begin at the substation and then visually, physically, their crews will check every bit of the line going out toward the end. So depending on where your pumps, your wells are in that um, location of those lines, D there may be some pumps and wells that will be off longer than others. So I urge you to work with Rosemary Anderson. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I had one uh, idea that came to me is that we're setting up this plan for, for water conservation using our, our new meter infrastructure where we let the people know on a perhaps daily basis that they have a leak. And using that kind of reverse communication we could use it for something like this as well as other kinds of issues that are really emergencies to let our customers know easily. I mean, we would have the infrastructure already set up. Tyler, Tyler Notify mm -hmm. is a product that we have with our Tyler software, right. and it allows us to isolate call areas by geographic location, by route, mm -hmm. um, to go ahead and both call, text, or email those customers. That's great. Good. Okay. So um, next is uh, Procurement policy. 
So tonight we're bringing you our, our um, district procurement policy. We last looked at this back in November of 2014. Um, since then, we've um, done a lot of work toward um, getting some federal funding grants, low interest loans, that type of thing, and those come with their own procurement guidelines. So what we've done over the last couple of months is we spent a lot of time with the um, OMB's uh, Uniform Guidance Code. Um, Ryan and I did attend a workshop on um, federal procurement guidelines. We have solicited samples from California Society of Municipal Finance Officers and all of the um, agencies that belong to that. And we've also looked at best practice guidance from the Government Finance Officers, Officers Association. So it's been a compilation of what we've seen out there in terms of best practices, what we're seeing other agencies are doing, um, what the OMB uniform guidance requires for agencies that are federally funded and what the state requires in terms of public works projects. So we've pulled all of that information together into a procurement policy that we brought to you this evening. Um, we did go ahead and meet with our Finance and Administrative Services Committee and talk to them a little bit about procurement, pr procurement thresholds and they um, made some recommendations that we incorporated into the policy. And the policy has also been reviewed by various uh, managers at the district who do a lot of purchasing and um, the attorneys at Hanson Bridget. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about the policy we've brought before you this evening. I, I just had a question. For some reason, going from 2,500 to 9,000 seemed like a lot without a, um, a PO. So I, I was just wondering if what other people thought, but I mean. I'll tell you that the government now is 10,000 on a credit card. Okay, I know. It surprised the <laughs> heck out of me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm just conservative. I, it, it does need to be included in the budget before that can be authorized. Right. Yeah, I saw and, that. And then a department manager would have to provide approval for the purchase before okay. it can be authorized. Understood, okay. No other questions? Um, any public comment on this item? I, I oh, had one yes, question. Yes, Bob. The general manager's approval and PO report of the board is 25 to 44.99. Is that no longer exists or should that be changed to, to 50,000? It would be changed to 50,000. Okay. Yeah. So he, he would report out anything to the board. Otherwise, it's $4,499.99. Four $49.99. $49.99. Okay. So, any no public comment? Um, I move approval then. I I'll second. Sec okay. Go ahead. That's fine. <laughs> I'm jumping in there. <laughs> I'll second it. Okay. So there's um, no revisions. So okay. So the first motion, just to approve the revisions already made. Okay. We should probably take public comment. I did ask for that. No one had any. I asked for public comment already. Okay. I didn't. I didn't no. catch it. So I did ask for public comment, but just checking. Okay. This item. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Um, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carries. Great. Okay. And Bruce, thank you for your service on the committee. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I think this will save the district a lot of money. You can imagine the time spent, you know, getting little things approved up the ladder is is mm -hmm. annoying as well as expensive so all right so the next item is um the countywide fish and stream habitat monitoring program right and we know that uh, one of the district's organizational values is environmental stewardship and this is directly related to that before i jump into it i'll just recognize that emma really did the research and pulled this together um, both are <coughs> from Emma, but, I noticed uh, that. took a lot of time to sort things out so thank you Emma for doing that and I'll I'll do the the gist of the talking um, but if you'd like to chime in please do so so basically the district usually contributes about ten thousand dollars per year although it's fluctuated a little bit to help with the uh, sh stream monitoring uh, in our area Soquel Creek, Aptos, Valencia and the lagoon down there uh, uh, last year, th we the board upped that because uh, our regular contribution went toward uh, enhancing the database and the website that all this is reported out on. 
And so <clears throat> where that leads us today is that the board has four options, and maybe you can find that table going down a little Page bit. Page 118. Yeah, there we go. Uh, from which to choose if they or, or take no action, but there's $10,000 budgeted to uh, stream, uh, to do the stream monitoring this year. We didn't know that the number was gonna fluctuate and such, but that would cover option four. If the board chooses to do uh, any of the top three options, you can see uh, the additional, um, you can kind of do the math uh, what the total would be and subtract 10 grand from that. So and further down in the memo, um, it has <clears throat> there's a recommendation uh, from the fish biologist Don Alley of Alley and Associates who usually samples these streams and I'm searching so for that. It was just to alternate the lagoon and Valencia Creek. Yeah, it, he, you know, I, Option two, he, he, you know, he would prefer option one, but if that's not available due to the cost, then option uh, two, and then alternate next year so you get uh, three. with three to get the, the well, this, part this, When we were doing the groundwater sustainability plan, part of it is the effects on streams and habitats, and this data was, was very valuable. So I'm glad that we've done it in the past, and I, I fully support option one. Me too. To do in the in the future, and I'll make that motion. Well, I would like to bring up the issue that since this is going to be stuff that has to be reported by the MGA, shouldn't this be an MGA uh, expense uh, rather than? Of course, we will pay most of it anyway. But yeah, but still, yeah. yeah, this is information that the MGA will clearly need to do their annual reports. Yeah, and. It, it could evolve that way in the future, and that's a good point. There was some discussion around that, and then um, it hasn't this year. I mean, that's certainly something we could take back, but just getting through, I think it's a stepwise process, but that's the board's, you know, desire. Well, There's other I, costs that are like that, too, but right now we've kind of, the sampling, we've, we've held true to ours, you know, like uh, uh, well sampling and that sort of thing. So can I amend my motion to include um, bringing this up to the MGA for future years? Sure. And is there any public comment before we go too far? Yeah. There's not a second on that anyway. So. Not yet. I was waiting. Yeah. Oh, I have <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. I, I live in the Aptos Creek Canyon, and I'm always interested in those the health of that stream. So I want to be... Um, very sure that as the Granite Way well comes online that you are watching those stream levels carefully. Most notably Valencia Creek because when the district moved the location of the Granite Way well further away from Aptos Creek and closer to Valencia and Trout Creek, um, those impacts were not really addressed, those potential impacts. And so um, Valencia and Trout Creek are already pretty challenged, and I want to really know that uh, the district is going to get some good baseline uh, readings of those creeks um, and um, monitoring it regularly and frequently as the Granite Way well comes online. That's a big well. Thank you. Thank you. I encourage you to make that comment to the uh, Groundwater Sustainability Plan as well. Uh, Don Alley, Brookdale. Uh, I'm doing the sampling. I'm, I'm available for any questions you might have regarding the monitoring. Questions? I had one I couldn't remember. I know this year was, the last two years were changes in the whole approach to the program, partly due to the database building, and then this year uh, San Lorenzo Water District uh, declined to contribute the, the, the amount of their passport so it left the county who is coordinating all the partners trying to uh, organize it. So I really applaud Emma for uh, clearing this up for us because uh, she has a lot of, uh, there are a lot of questions that have to be answered. But one of the questions I keep forgetting is who, who, who is funding the work on Valencia and Aptos Creeks previously, two years, three years ago? Uh, the, the water district. We We've been doing it yep. for a long time. But long it's time. for 10000 
Yep. Well, the, the county has always contributed, and this year they'll be contributing, I think, $5,000. 7,900 okay. for okay. total. 7,000. That includes the city. Yep. Yeah, oh, I that includes the city, yeah. Mm -hmm. so the city contributes to sample one of the states. From the county. Mm -hmm. So uh, their money has gone, it really hasn't been said how it's spent, but it's used, mm -hmm. sometimes it's used for Valencia and the Lagoon and Aptos Creek. Um, so I think the continuity of the data collection is really important. So that's behind that too, um, and I'm happy that somebody else is contributing to it. That yeah. it's they recognize that importance already, even mm -hmm. before the MGA. So I think in yep. years past we were the only we ones were it for were a it. long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. the city would do the lagoon, but that's all. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. So things are getting better. So um, your motion was option one. Option one with oh. an addition that we approach. I was second that the one. The MGA. Here we go. Not Carla. fast enough. No, I'm gonna do that. We approach the MGA, <laughs> you know that that we approach the MGA for yes. future year funding. Okay, that sounds good, and seconded by Director Aye. Christensen. Okay, all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, thank you. And then. Um, Last item is um, 6.7, scope of work for hydrologists. Taj is gonna cover that item tonight. Thank you, Taj. Hi, so um, Montgomery and Associates, formerly Hydrometrics Water Resources, has uh, submitted at the staff's request this scope of work. Um, generally, there are um, about seven items. Um, well, there's eight. I wanted to point out, for before I forget, there is a small typo in the uh, table two, the cost estimate um, item. A task seven was left off, so um, eight and nine are actually a little, they should be seven and eight, just to clarify for that. Um, they're he proposing to support the district for grant management, grant applications if there are additional ones or follow up uh, documentation required. Um, looking over the basis of design report for the draft seawater intrusion prevention wells. Um, doing the next phase of groundwater modeling based on the information from the Twin Lakes pilot recharge well. Um, also supporting the final anti-degradation study. Um, the Title 22 engineering report which is required for our project to move forward. Um, ultimately, in the end, that's a, a large effort. And then any uh, legal technical support for our, our case in court related to Pure Water Soquel, and then um, over overall general support for the program. I did point out that the, the budget did include $26,016 remaining from last fiscal year, but that money does not automatically roll over to fund this effort, so we have to uh, budget the whole amount. I had a question about uh, the table on page 124, it's table one, and I see grant support is by far the largest one, whereas modeling is only $1,500, you know, peanuts there, and Grant support is described as provide information and participate in meetings as necessary to update grant agencies and the technical advisory committee for grant implementation. That doesn't seem like something that's going to take thirty-one thousand dollars, whereas I would think you know more modeling is, would be more likely to be thirty-one thousand than this would. This well, if I should point out, maybe Table Two on page one twenty-six would give you a more de detailed description of those efforts. Um, there will be continued updates and meetings that they've budgeted for. That's $8,500 for the grant support. Um, and then any responses. These are, of course, as needed. This is their estimate of what, what they anticipate we will need. This is some of it uh, under grant support. There's a part of that that's for modeling. Well, it's interesting, this table you mentioned on page 126. That's in. That's in sixty-seven thousand dollars listed. And it, that's invoiced amount in Table One. Eighteen, nineteen invoiced amount. It's different, I believe, than Table Two. 
Is that correct? No, then it's N not. No, this is uh, fiscal year 1920, and the total for this effort is 143,920. Right, and the right. other one is for. Oh, the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is right. Table one is for past work that they've provided yeah. um, last fiscal year. Sorry, Table I didn't. Two point is, out. is the proposed. Yeah, proposed. But this doesn't match what's. I mean, here we got uh, modeling is sixty-seven thousand dollars, and grant support is ten thousand. So this doesn't match what we are proving to me. Well, there's more grant support. There's two two tasks. Task one and two are both grant support. Okay. Um, so ten thousand four eighty and twenty one sixty six is your thirty one thousand thirty two thousand. Okay. But again, modeling is by far the biggest sixty seven thousand dollars here. Yeah. It's only fifteen hundred dollars in the. That's all they did last. No, no, fifteen hundred was last, uh, and that scope I think phase. Yeah, that table's confused. Table uh, yeah, table one is not what you're approving. Well, this says table two on page 126. Correct. Correct. That's, that's what you're, approved. that's up to approval for okay. tonight. And what we're approving for modeling is $67,000 for modeling. That's correct. But that's not what was listed back in the, the, uh, in the memo? In the staff report. Then that is my error, and I apologize table for that. Table one has $1,500 for phase two modeling. That's well, actually, it's not listed in the memo. Page, on page 124. Table one is Table one. Past that's last right. year. That was what Table one was included to give you a flavor of what they worked on last fiscal year. Right, okay, got it, got it. So we don't have any listing other than back here. Table years. two is really the, the detailed description of what they anticipate we'll need. Got it. All right. So your intuition was correct. It's mainly modeling. Okay, Bruce. So I, I always wonder whether our uh, consultants or you know, top in the field, medi you know, not s okay, adequate, or, n or not okay. So I asked people that I know who are in the field about our consultants. I asked the person who's, one of the people who's um, taking over for Randy Hansen at the USGS office in San Diego, and he had good things to say about, about Cameron. So just thought I'd pass good. that on. No, that's great to hear. Thank you. Any public comment on this item? Colonel Terry Maxwell again, commenting on why 6.7 should not be approved, should not be further funded. And the reasons include, sadly, both the prior and now incumbent Soquel Creek Water District boards of directors and some senior staff have variously demonstrated during the past 40 years favoritisms for the greediest and most rapacious overdevelopers, and also clear profligate negligence in the well-informed observations of other 40-year residents and customers of your district. For decades, continuing prior corruptions in the opinion of many and negligence has caused and resulted in the aquifer overdrafting and seawater intrusion crisis now manifested in impacting this region. A very honorable county citizen and layperson advocate for the public interest, Ms. Becky Steinbrenner properly sought a restraining order and exposure of this now incumbent SoCal Creek Water District senior staff, and you have grotesquely and shamelessly violated the legal requirements of the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, and the related regulations and statutes. You have made a mockery of the California environmental impact review process requirements by your collective complicity and individual failures to perform your sworn duties and your obligations to comply with the environmental laws of this state and implicitly also the federal laws. The same applies to your legal counsel. Then Judge Gallagher of the Superior Court perfunctory ruled against even a brief TRO and denied Ms. Steinbrenner the simple justice she sought for herself and many thousands of other county residents and water district rate payers and customers. For these reasons, that is true. That's true, that's happening No, no, long. that's not, what, I, what, what is true is that you're not dealing with this particular item. Yes, I am, I'm dealing with, it's, it, it's implementing the Pure Water Soquel matter, as it, it's described, if you read it in detail, it is. Scope of Lastly, work. this board must immediately tonight vote to direct your legal counsels to withdraw all any challenges to Ms. Streinberg's per uh, TRO uh, and to, for you to comply with the California EIR review and the California law and re regarded things. 
It's wrong for you to fund this a nickel more until you get a finding. And if there's any justice, she will prevail and you and your legal counsel will be fined for wasting the ratepayers' money at the hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. <laughs> all right. Um, well, I would like to say one thing about 40 years. First of all, even Director Daniels, who's been on the board the longest, has not been on for 40 years. Um, but the one thing I'd like to point out, if you go to page 44 of, of the agenda, was the water use in 2005, it actually, uh, and it's over 5,000 acre feet, and the water use last year was a little bit, it was over, slightly over uh, 3,000 acre feet, so two, two thirds of what it was in 2005. Mm -hmm. So, and that's due to our customers, but it's also due to the board, so. I just want to point that out that uh, I'm actually very proud of the decrease in water use in our district that has slowed down seawater intrusion. Okay, um, you have a comment on this particular item? I do. Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner, resident of Aptos. Um, I have in communication to your board asked for the final copy of the um, anti-degradation evaluation and it is apparent in this uh, workload on page 123 uh, support for final anti-degradation report so um, Brown and Caldwell is finalizing the anti-degradation report for pure water SoCal project including updating the meet requirements of the 2018 amendments of the recycled water policy. Um, the state requires this report to um, ensure that projects will not degrade the quality of the water. I think, I think it's very concerning that your board approved the Pure Water SoCal project with only a draft anti-degradation evaluation which cannot be relied upon and is not a solid proof of anything really until it is finalized. So it is concerning to me as uh, someone whose family and community depends on the aquifer for our, our water that you have chosen to approve without the state requirement uh, meeting, um, where is it? <laughs> Resolution 6816, I think it is. And, um, and I really think you need to think about your actions. How will you know? How will you know what this project will do? You don't even have the data yet. And here you are um, spending more money to get it, but you don't have it. And you've approved the project. Thank you. I just want to point out again that you know we had this whole issue analyzed by a panel of very well-respected experts, and and then it's been determined over and over again to be safe in multiple locations. So, and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't. And looking at data about our groundwater and data from other pure water projects around the state, it's clear that we're actually going to be improving water quality by this project rather than making it worse. It's been found all over the state. In fact, down in Orange County, the, uh, the district down there is just a, a, a re replenishment district. And the actual districts that serve customers have been moving their wells closer and closer to the uh, Orange County's injection wells because that is purer water there than back over here was. And so I think we're going to find exactly the same thing here has been found all over the state. And with that, we will adjourn. Thank you. We're going to close session now. Yep. Did, you make uh, did you make a motion? doing back and forth. Um, uh, please it's not back please and sit forth. Down. The you, public you, is allowed to give comment before you go into public to okay. close session. That's the Brown Act. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Go ahead. So do you need to reopen the meeting? To adjourn? Yeah. Because you adjourned. You, you did adjourn, right? Or did yes, you adjourn? he did. Well, he can open it for comment. I can open it for public comment. That's fine. Go ahead. So the meeting is open?
and yes. community television is uh, hold on going. one moment please before you, mm -hmm. uh, you could you sit down while we address this next item uh, when you can come back up what is the next item please sit down till we address the next item oh you can come you'll have your chance to come back up thank you so uh, I want to clarify on the last item do we get the motions for the uh, no, no, pure no. water. Let's go back to that. Can. Let's go back okay. to there. Sorry, my bad. So, Bob, do um, we need to open the? Uh, we'll open it. Open it back up. That's fine. It's fine. Okay. So, make a motion. Oh, I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And so, yes. Go ahead and make comment on closed session, and then we will go into closed session. Thank you. My name is Becky Steinbrunner. I am the petitioner in pro per taking the legal action against your district in Santa Cruz County Superior Court. It's case 19CV00181. Um, I'm sure Mr. Basso will fill you in. But what I want to tell you is that I find it um, very distressing that a citizen's concern of uh, miscarriage of justice brought about by a judge who had recused himself of doing anything regarding a case, Mr. Cole's case, in 2017. That was case 17CV00689. Judge Gallagher voluntarily disqualified himself because he had been a trial attorney with Mr. Basso and represented you for 23 years. At no point in him watching over and handling my case, did he ever disclose that? He did say that he had been uh, done legal work, but he never said that he had filed a statement of recusal, which he did for Mr. Cole's case. So when I found that out, after he had denied my uh, request to um, give me some breathing room, for submitting very complicated, complex briefs that will have to be supported by case law, statutes, and references to the now almost 90 binders of printed material that is the administrative record, which I did not get certified, augmented from the district until August 2nd. The, the deadline would, would have been this Friday for me to do that. I have had to work very hard and spend a lot of my time to get Judge Gallagher disqualified, which he finally did for cause right after he denied my request to vacate this order that imposes substantial and adverse hardship on me due to a very compressed briefing schedule he promptly, within 30 minutes, recused himself. So I asked for a motion for reconsideration ex parte, and I did that ex parte, that's the fourth time, because it is an emergency. Under the conditions as they were, I would have had to have done all of this work by this Friday. That's why I took the emergency action. That action came before the newly assigned Judge Timothy Schmall, last Friday, he didn't have time for us, so it got relayed to, delayed to today. And I'm really sorry to say that Judge Small didn't even ask me how I uh, felt about having my uh, rule ruling denied by a judge who had recused himself immediately. Thank you. And how that affects my thank you. civil due process. Is it is, isn't it? Good night. Thank you. Good night, and thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you. Maxwell comment on this very point Ms. Steinbrenner raises. You should be embarrassed, ashamed, and your lawyer should be reprimanded for his conduct, the conduct of your outside legal counsel, and why couldn't Mr. Basso represent you before Judge Gallagher or anyone else when a lay lady, a lay person, brings her proper restraining order for your failure to comply with the fundamentals of the California Environmental Quality Act? for your failure to do an EIR properly, for your failure to consider alternatives effectively whatsoever, your failure, your failure to comply with the law. Plain and simple, you should be embarrassed. And the way she's been mistreated, again by the judges here, this county has a horrible reputation, 
all over the state for having some of the worst judges in California and for having some kind of complicity with the fixers in this county, such as Mr. Basso has been described by me as, who fix things for county businesses and developers and county agencies that want to deprive people like Ms. Steinbrenner her fair due process results in court and simple justice she seeks for all of us, ratepayers, which you've denied us, as well as you've denied us financial responsibility, as well as you've denied us alternatives would cost far less and not pollute the aquifer. Uh, that's, I want my statement included in your formal record here. It was submitted for that reason. And again, direct your lawyer to withdraw this, direct your lawyer to comply with the law and behave ethically. And Judge Gallagher should be removed from the bench. This meeting is now officially adjourned. We are going into closed session, so please vacate the room.